Hello from Shanghai. This is Chris. Welcome to another episode of China Currents, the weekly news report of what's trending in China. On March 19th, Hong Kong lawmakers unanimously passed the highly anticipated bill mandated by Article 23 of Basic Law of Hong Kong, following marathon sessions during which all lawmakers expressed their strong support for the law, which was first proposed more than 20 years ago. It is expected to play a crucial role in addressing the city's national security loopholes. Forming a solid national security shield with the national security law for Hong Kong by preventing the U.S.-led West's subversion, infiltration, incitement, and espionage activities in the city, the bill will be gazetted on Saturday and will take effect from then. The law enables Hong Kong to effectively prevent, suppress, and punish espionage activities, conspiracies, and traps from foreign intelligence agencies, and infiltration and sabotage by hostile forces. John Lee, Hong Kong's chief executive, mentioned that through the new law, Hong Kong can effectively prevent black-clad violence, color revolution, Hong Kong independence, and violent destruction. Next up, diplomacy. Visiting Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi met with New Zealand Prime Minister and Foreign Minister on Monday, March 18th, where he acknowledged that both sides have set many first records, making bilateral relations always at the forefront of China's relations with developed countries and becoming a valuable asset for both sides to cherish and carry forward. Wang said during his meetings with New Zealand Prime Minister Christopher Luxon that China regards New Zealand as a rational and mature cooperative partner. And China-New Zealand relations are of a strategic and long-term nature, according to the statement published by Chinese Foreign Ministry. Wang stated, "We are ready to take the opportunity of celebrating the 10th anniversary of our comprehensive strategic partnership with New Zealand to transcend new benchmarks, upgrade our comprehensive strategic partnership, and build relations between countries that are harmonious but different." So as to benefit our two peoples and make new contributions to world peace and development. On March 20th, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi told Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong in Canberra that since the relationship between China and Australia is on the right track, we should not hesitate, deviate, or backtrack. And development of the bilateral ties is not targeted at any third party, nor should it be influenced or interfered with by any third party. The Chinese foreign minister said, "This is an important year that carries on the past and opens up the future, building on the good momentum of bilateral relations so far. And both China and Australia should work together to create the future, and with a more proactive attitude, jointly build a more mature, stable, and fruitful comprehensive strategic partnership." Next up, technology. On March 20th, China successfully launched into preset orbit the Chuechao-2 relay communication satellite, as well as the Tiandu-1, Tiandu-2 communication and navigation technology experiment satellites. The key constellations supporting the country's subsequent Chang'e lunar exploration missions, as well as international exploration programs. Carrying the three satellites, a Long March 8 rocket took off from Wenchang Space Launch Site in South China's Hainan Province at around 8:31 a.m. on March 20th. And after a flight of 24 minutes, the Chuechao-2 satellite separated from the carrier rocket, and then its solar wings and communication antennas unfolded normally, marking the complete success of the launch mission, according to the China National Space Administration. Chuechao-2 or Magpie Bridge 2. It's a relay satellite for communications between the far side of the moon and the Earth. The satellite will serve as a relay platform for the fourth phase of China's lunar exploration program, providing communication services for Chang'e 4, Chang'e 6, and Chang'e 7 and Long March 8 missions. Next up, on March 18th, Chinese President Xi Jinping congratulated Vladimir Putin on his re-election as Russian president. As Putin has addressed his supporters and declared his re-election victory earlier on the same day, following the victory of presidential election with over 87 percent of the vote in his favor, Chinese analysts said that several major powers will hold elections this year, and Russia's presidential election result has provided certainty to a world in turbulence. As Putin's victory proves that Russian people widely supports his governance and Russia's policies and stances over key issues like the Ukraine crisis and its relations with other major powers, will unlikely undergo dramatic changes. Putin's re-election will bring certainty to the future development of China-Russia relations, 
as the consensus reached by the top leaders of the two countries will be implemented and further promoted, according to the experts, adding that China maintains its objective stance on the Ukraine crisis and will continue its efforts to help relevant parties to find solutions for political settlement. Next up, the brutal bullying and murder of a 13-year-old boy in North China's Handan has triggered a profound reflection on juvenile crime in Chinese society over the past few days, with many calling for a more effective way to keep teenagers from veering onto the wrong path. According to media reports, 7th grade boy Xiao Guang was killed and buried on March 10th by three of his classmates of the same age in Handan, North China's Hebei province. So far, all suspects have been captured and taken into custody, the joint working groups responsible for the case said on Sunday night. An autopsy was conducted in the body in the early hours of Monday. Relatives of Xiao Guang told media that Xiao Guang's father examined his child prior to the autopsy and saw clear injuries on the boy's head and back. The Beijing News reported on Monday, Xiao Guang has suffered from long-term school violence, previous media reports said. Experts on Monday said the murder could become the first case nationwide that applies a new provision under the criminal law amendment, thus serving as an alarm bell to warn and educate other potential offenders. The root cause of youth crime lies in the lack of family education and school supervision, with many cases involving left-behind children, they noted. Next up, in another patrol, China Coast Guard vessels sailed in the waters near Kinmen Islands on the last Friday and Saturday. A move, experts said, is intended to signal that Chinese mainland law enforcement vessels will conduct more patrols in the waters to protect lives and safeguard the legitimate rights of fishermen from both mainland and Taiwan region. Analysts from both sides of Taiwan Strait said that due to the February 14th fatal boat incident and poor handling and negative attitude of the secessionist Democratic Progressive Party authorities, the Chinese mainland will likely take more actions to protect the people and the DPP will face a bitter situation that was provoked by itself. According to the CCG, its Fujian province branch sent vessels to conduct law enforcement patrols in the waters near Kinmen on Friday and Saturday. The Coast Guard claimed that the move aims to safeguard the legitimate rights and safety of life and property for Chinese fishermen, including those from Taiwan region. It said the CCG will keep strengthening its law enforcement patrols and inspections. Next up, on March 16th, Chinese scholars unveiled a preliminary proposal draft in Beijing that could potentially shape the nation's forthcoming artificial intelligence law. The proposal draft pays attention to the development issues of industrial practices in three areas of data, computing power, and algorithms, Zhao Jingwu, an associate professor from Beihang University Law School, told the media. Chow said that the proposal also introduces the AI insurance system that encourages the intervention of the insurance market through policy incentives, exploring insurance products suitable for the AI industry. In addition, it proposes an enhancement of the citizens' digital literacy, aiming to prevent and control the security risks of the technology from the user end. Next up, during Wednesday's routine press conference, when asked to comment on Blinken's remark during the Summit for Democracy on Monday accusing China of spreading false information, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman said that China strongly opposes and is firmly against the remarks, and has made solemn representations to the US side. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's accusing China of spreading false information is in itself false information, said Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian on Wednesday. Democracy versus authoritarianism hyped up at the so-called Summit for Democracy is a false narrative, while accusing China is spreading disinformation itself is disinformation, Lin noted. He said that the US is the world's biggest source and spreader of disinformation, and the world sees this clearly. Last but not least, a group of landing ships of the Chinese People's Liberation Army recently held live fire exercises in the South China Sea, with analysts saying on Sunday that flexible vessels capable of carrying tanks in amphibious landing missions are important in the safeguarding of China's territorial sovereignty and maritime rights. The plans Dan Xiaoshan, the plans Daiyun Shan, and the plans Wanyang Shan recently formed a task force and conducted multi-course realistic combat exercises in an undisclosed area in the South China Sea, China Central Television reported on Sunday. According to the report and publicly available information, the plans Dan Xiaoshan is a Type 0723 tank landing ship, 
or the Plans Dai Yunshan and Plans Wan Yangshan, a Type 072A tank landing ships. During the drills, the vessels undertook training courses including live fire shooting against sea mine targets and cyber side mooring. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for watching this episode of China Currents. If you have any thoughts and comments about our show, please reach us at email address below. I'm Chris. Looking forward to hearing from you, and see you next time.